For more on today's elections, let us bring in CBS News political correspondent Ed O'Keefe. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. Important day. You excited? I am. I heard you it's say like, that you woke up like, like before your alarm clock today. I did. It's like Christmas for eggheads around here. So we're very excited. All right. So help us break down the numbers here. Uh, Republicans obviously currently hold a majority in the House. What would it take for Democrats to gain? They it, In the House, yep. they have to net 23 seats. The magic number tonight is 218. So currently, Democrats have 195 seats. They need to hold all of those or find a way to get back to 195, then gain at least another... Uh, 23 seats to get to the 218. Republicans obviously have the edge, but they are obviously on defense in far more places than Democrats tonight who are on offense. Uh, so, and Democrats have insisted throughout. They have multiple ways to get those 23 seats tonight. It can be on the East Coast, it can be in the Midwest, it can be down South in the Sun Belt or out in California, even all the way to Alaska, mm. if it's a good night for them, they could get it. So the president has been very busy over the last 24 hours. But, you know, it's not just uh, obviously you understand why he'd be interested in the Senate and the House. But he's been paying a lot of attention to ra governor races yes. as well in Florida, in Georgia. Explain to people why the president would have an interest in the governors of these states. Remember, he won these states in 2016. He wants a partisan ally in charge of them going into 2020. And Republicans want one of their own in charge of it going into 2021 after the decennial census when the lines get redrawn for congressional districts, for legislative districts, when money starts flowing in from Congress in different ways depending on how many people they have. Right. So for people at home, it's important obviously because they set a lot of the policy that most affects you directly. But for the president, he's very concerned that he wants to see Republicans in charge of places like Mich Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Florida, Texas, that won't happen tonight. There will be Democratic wins in some of those states, not in Texas, mm -hmm. but in all those other ones, most likely or possibly uh, you will see Democrats back in charge, which thrills them because now they can rebuild those state parties ahead of 2020. Mm -hmm. Now they can start preparing for redistricting no matter how it's done in 2021. Uh, and that's why governor's races always under discussed in yeah, conversations really like this, mm -hmm. but arguably more important than what goes on in Congress. So let me ask you this big picture. What sort of bellwether races are you looking at to just to give us a sense of where things might be? Headed? Which one do you want? Uh, you you pick. Got, Dealer's choice. I mean, we have, <laughs> I mean well, let, let, look, there, there are something like 61 that CBS is tracking. We can do this in a lot of ways. Let's start on the East Coast. There are like four or five competitive races in New Jersey tonight. If Democrats can win most of those, they're off to a good start. Mm. Four we're tracking in Virginia. Virginia 10, just outside Washington. Uh, very suburban district. It's where essentially everyone that President Trump says is in the deep state lives. Mm. All the federal employees and the right. government contractors. Republican Barbara Comstock in the race of her life against Democrat Jennifer Wexton. You go to Florida. The 26th and the 27th, essentially the southernmost districts in the United States, are on the map tonight. Ileana Ross Layton is retiring from South Beach. Carlos Curbelo, the moderate Republican, he's been struggling. Um, has been struggling. Uh, if he goes, it's 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 a sign that Democrats are in very good shape because he's the kind of Democrat or Republican, Republican forgive yeah. me, that can hold on tonight. Yeah. Just given the fact that he's done a good job distancing right. himself a little bit from the president. Go to the Midwest, Iowa. Democrats think they can win two races in Iowa tonight in the Des Moines area and in Northeast Iowa where uh, Rod Blum, a Tea Party back guy, is facing a challenge from a 29-year-old, Abby Finkenauer. She's a member of the state legislature. If she wins, she immediately becomes a real kingmaker in the 2020 presidential primary in the Democrat, for Democrats because they're all going to come kissing her ring uh, and, and hope to get her endorsement. And then go all the way out west, California. All those races in the Orange County area, San Diego. Does a guy like Dana Rohrabacher lose tonight? Uh, Russia's biggest friend in Congress. And then in Alaska, I said it earlier, there are, there are indications that Don Young, the longest serving member of the House right now, could be in the race of his career. He's down by one in a poll that was released over the weekend. If he loses, Mm. In other very, words, very, very it's going to be a really late night if we have to wait for Alaska. Very, very quickly, early That's a voting. a very, very good night, Anne Marie, <laughs> because it means everyone's votes count all across the that country. That is very true. true. Uh, early voting, speaking of voting, yes. breaking records all over the place. What does it mean? Well, in the states that are doing it, there are some indications that younger voters, minority voters, are turning up in huge numbers. In some cases, plus 200 percent versus four years ago, plus 400 percent. A vote is a vote is a vote. They'll all be counted tonight. And just because a certain number of Democrats are showing up or a certain number of Republicans are showing up doesn't mean that they're voting for those parties. Yeah. And we don't know if there are a lot of independents showing up. And we don't know that all those young people are necessarily voting for Democrats as they would hope. Yeah. So indicates that there's enthusiasm, 
but doesn't necessarily give us a sense. I'll tell you one thing, though, anecdotally, and, and I think we should put a little more emphasis into these anecdotal uh, reports that we get, because we probably relied a little too much on data two years ago when the anecdotes were staring us in the face. Mm -hmm. Talked to a guy in the Des Moines area yesterday. He says, we're so confident we're going to get the governor's race, we're going to win two congressional races in Iowa. We have more volunteers showing up than we know what to do with. We're mm -hmm. running out of literature. We're running out of call sheets. We're running out of door knocking sheets because so many people are showing up to help. That kind of enthusiasm in places like Iowa, where Democrats have suffered for the last several years, suggests they could be in for a good night. Very interesting. Very interesting Ed, thank you so much. Always, Always good love to talking have. to you. Yeah. yeah. All right. So